Hello and welcome to this special podcast. Today we are going to talk to former judge of Supreme Court of India, Mr. Markandeya Kajju. Thank you so much sir for joining us for the interview. So my first question is how do you see democratic setup changing in this pandemic in terms of global context and in indian context see uh, uh, i have no faith in this democracy because uh, this uh, uh, parliamentary democracy in india has really become caste and communal vote bank 90% people vote on that basis and casteism and communalism are feudal forces they have to be destroyed if the country is to progress but parliamentary democracy further entrenches them so i don't have any faith in this this will not lead to country's progress so uh, how do you see the world structure is changing because of this pandemic see i think this this uh, pandemic uh, danger has been over exaggerated it is not such a big danger as it has been predicted to be Firstly, hardly two percent people who get uh, this infection die of it. Ninety-eight percent recover. That is the statistics. Mm-hmm. So there are much more dangerous diseases like uh, TB and malaria and flu and dengue. They kill ten times more people, but nobody talks of that. Mm-hmm. See, in a huge country of one million thirty or one thirty-five crore, people are dying of various things. So many diseases, car accidents. Mm, diabetes heart attacks and all so this is also one of the it's not uh, such a uh, big uh, 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 scare which people have made it out to be so uh, i would love i would also would like to know from you how do you see the functioning of judiciary in times of pandemic because everything is under lockdown do you think it is uh, function properly or do you think something can be done for its proper functioning listen uh, so far the indian judiciary is concerned i have said several times that indian judiciary is beyond redemption mm-hmm. it does i have no hope for it firstly what kind of judiciary is it which takes 20 years 30 years to decide a case finally in appeal and all and then a large section of it has become corrupt so whether there is pandemic or non pandemic it makes no difference i have no faith in it what should be done to uh, improve the situation according to you sir nothing there is there is going to be a revolution in this country the system has collapsed totally collapsed you see my uh, article called uh, why celebrate republic day when the constitution has become a scarecrow mm-hmm. this was published in uh, the week dot in mm-hmm. i have said that everything has collapsed all state institutions have become hollow and empty shells whether it is parliament or judiciary or bureaucracy everything is collapsed and people's distress is growing the unemployment is rising mm-hmm. 12, 12 million youth are entering the job market in india every year 12 million mm-hmm. but the jobs are becoming less so what will these young people do i'm uh, it's a very dismal um, scene so uh, very bad in this country and they are going to get worse and so, i'm sorry to say most of our politicians of all parties i'm not saying of any particular party they have no genuine love for the country they are only interested in power and wealth mm-hmm. sir uh, there has been a migrant crisis that uh, not just india but the whole world is undergoing right now do you think india has managed a migrant crisis properly no you are you talking of migrants um, uh, uh, who have come into cities from the villages are you talking of that yeah yeah uh, you see what has happened is in india uh firstly the population of india in united india in 1947 was between 40 to 45 crores mm-hmm. today india alone has over 130 crores so the population has increased four times then uh, in 1947 hardly 15% people in india lived in cities mm-hmm. 85% lived in villages but after that uh, there has been mass migration um, of people from the rural areas to urban areas today it is estimated that between uh, 35 to 40% people in india live in cities when there were only 15% living there so uh, and these people who have come from the villages they have come because there was nothing for them to do in the villages as i said the population has increased four times so 
there was no land the pressure on land had become too much and moreover some machinery had come that had displaced labor so they had uh, no employment in the rural areas so they came for employment in the cities now because of uh, this lockdown they are being told to go back but when they go back what will they do mm-hmm. there no work for them mm-hmm. Here, at least in cities, they were earning something and they were sending some money to their. So, sir, has the, so, sir, sorry to interrupt you. So, sir, has the government managed uh, the crisis like in a better way, like, or could it have been managed better? I'm asking this because I, because I'm asking this because migrants are suffering. They're like walking on the roads. Many are even dying on the and on the road. I'm saying that this lockdown itself was a big mistake. Mm-hmm. See, just because Europe or America has a lockdown, it doesn't mean you must also have a lockdown. It may have been all right for America, where the number of deaths has, I think, crossed eighty thousand or something. Here, the number of deaths is hardly one and a half thousand or something. I mean, we have immunity to the disease. So this lockdown itself was a decision taken in haste, without proper consideration and without wide consultation. So, sir, so how suddenly so, so, declared? It, it was a big mistake. It could not have been declared. So, sir, you think it's now? It's not such a danger. Okay. So, sir, you think now the economy should open and lo- lockdown should be lifted? Absolutely. It, 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 the, it, firstly, it was a big mistake to have a lockdown. However, now the mistake is made. At least rectify it and and lift the leg, lockdown. Sir, my last question is: So, you have been talking a bit about national government. Can you please elaborate? What do you mean by that? See, I am telling you that uh, the in, uh, India is in such a cri- economic crisis. Mm-hmm. Even without this uh, Corona, mm-hmm. the economy is totally tanked. The uh, business sector is in a very bad state, except for a handful of people. Uh, even businessmen are weeping. Their businesses are down. Uh, unemployment has reached record levels. Situation is so desperate mm-hmm. that uh, alone uh, uh, BJP or Mr. Modi cannot solve the problem. The problem has become too big for these people to solve. It requires a united effort of everybody, and this reminds me of what happened in England when and there was danger of uh, German invasion, mm-hmm. Nazi invasion in 1940. Then in May 1940. Prime Minister Winston Churchill formed a, 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 a national government in which he included the opposition. The Labour Party leader actually was made deputy prime minister, mm-hmm. and other Labour Party members were also made ministers. In fact, for five years there was no opposition in the British Parliament because the members of opposition had joined, all joined the government. So similarly, now the economic danger is so huge in this country; whole economy is collapsing. That we need a united uh, government, a national government consisting of uh, people of all parties and also uh, scientists and economists and technical people, admin, the top level people, so that all get together and we all make a united uh, stand against this uh, challenge. The big, big challenge is the economy. Mm-hmm. It's only is totally collapsing, and see, even without this corona, this has made the position even worse. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you so much. Okay, so-